The next step, once you've downloaded the tools that we need, in this case, only a code editor, the next step is to begin developing your first obligatory Hello World page. And we're going to get started on that right now. So I'm going to be using one of the code editors I mentioned, and this one is called Espresso. That said, feel free to use any tool you need. They're mostly the same with minor differences. I'm going to go to File, New File, and I'm going to save this to my desktop, and I'm going to call it index.html. Index is the as naming convention, which usually refers to your root page in a website. So for example, let's say you're building your first static, and don't worry about that word, we'll cover that later, but a static website, you will have maybe an about page. That could be about.html. You could be have a portfolio page, portfolio.html. And then your root page, meaning when they go to your website's URL, the default page that shows will probably be called index.html. So we'll save that like so. And now you can see that it creates this page right here. And whether you're on Windows or Mac, you'll have some identification that it's an HTML file. So if we were to bring this into a browser like Chrome, you're not going to see anything yet. And of course, it's a blank file. Now, while we're on the topic of browsers, you want to make sure that you have modern browsers installed on your computer. So for a Mac user, you're going to want Safari. Current version is 5 at the time of this recording. Chrome. Current version is 11 at the time of this recording. And Firefox, which is at version 4. Now, if you're on Windows, you'll also want to install IE9. Now, what you'll learn is, and I don't want to scare you just yet, but what you will learn is you also have to compensate for older browsers. And all browsers have varying levels of consistency in what features they support. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. But for now, don't worry about it just yet. We'll get that into that in later lessons. So let's begin developing our first Hello World page. When you think of this page, you want to think of the markup for my website. So as an example, let's go and open up NetTouch. And I'm going to view the source. And I can do that by right-clicking or on the Mac, if you don't have a right button, control-clicking and coming down to view page source. And what you're going to see here is a lot of really, really scary source code. But don't worry, it's not quite as scary as you might think. You see all of this, though? This is the markup that tells your page and tells the browser how to display your page. For example, let's say we have a list of items. And you would know that as bullet points if you've ever worked with Microsoft Word or Gmail. Well, when you're writing HTML markup, there's no way to write bullet point you have to specify it. And the way you specify that in HTML is by using these tags right here. You see this one here, li? That refers to list item, or you'll be more familiar with it as a bullet. Now that we know that markup is mostly elements, it's tags put together to form a web page. Let's try this on our own. I'm going to type hello world. Now, let's load the page. So you have a couple options. Some code editors offer a preview option where it'll show you how the browser, one browser's engine, keep in mind, will display the page. Alternatively, you can grab the file and drag it in to your favorite editor. Another option is to go into your browser, file, open file, and browse to the file. So right here, we now see Hello World. Now, that said, this is a bad practice. This is not what you will be doing. You need to format your markup much better so that the browser knows exactly what page it is and how it should display. But that said, I want to teach you a little bit about HTML elements. So when you're working with maybe your email and you want to make some text bold, usually you highlight it and you press a button that says bold, correct? Well, you can't do that with HTML markup. Instead, you need to wrap the text within elements or tags that specifies how the element should be displayed. So within HTML, if we want to make something bold in general, you would wrap it within a tag called strong. Now take a note of this. Notice that I did not simply write strong in the text. I have to wrap this text within strong tags. And the reason for this is because if I did not have a closing strong tag, the browser would not know when to end the bold. So if you're used to highlighting and pressing bold, this is the same thing except we wrap the text that should be bold within an element. And notice, this is how we've created our strong tag. 
So we begin by typing the less than sign, the tag name, and we close it. And then we do the exact same thing at the end of the text, but the only difference is we need to specify that we're closing the tag. And we close the tag by using that forward slash right there. So I'm gonna zoom out, save this, and let's try it one more time and see what happens. Sure enough, text is now bold. But let's say instead we want it to be italic. You might do that one as well. In HTML, we refer to that as emphasis. And what you'll learn, and I don't wanna get into it too much just yet, but what you will learn is that your HTML tags or elements, you should never describe how the text should appear. So for example, we would never see bold, or we would never see a tag that says font size 20. So why is that? And we're not gonna get into it just yet, but the reason is on a high level or a higher level is because you will learn that presentation, how the page should look, is dependent upon a separate file that we call a style sheet. We should be able to control the entire presentation of our page, the entire way it looks from that file. So what if we decide that later, maybe a month from now, we want the text size to be 50 pixels or 50 point you might be more familiar with. Well, in that case, you would have to come back to your HTML file and change this to font size 50. And that is a big no-no. You should never cross those. To edit your presentation, you should never have to return to your HTML file. So if that's confusing to you, that's okay. It should be. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Your HTML tags should never be reflective of the styling of your page. Now that said, going back, if we want to make this text italic, by default, we would use what's known as emphasis tags. And that is E-M for emphasis. Notice that we're not saying italic. We're saying this text should receive emphasis. And by default, we can provide emphasis by putting in italics. Though if you decided later you wanted that emphasis to be displayed in a different way, you could do the exact same thing from that style sheet that we spoke about. So hopefully that makes a glimmer of sense. I'm gonna come back, refresh the page, and sure enough, the text is now italic. So your first thought might be now, what is telling this browser to display this as italic? We have markup and we've told it to be emphasized, but as we learned, that really has little to do with visuals. It's more describing the content. This content should be strong. This content should be a list item. This content should be emphasized. We're not saying bold. We're not saying italic. We're not saying font size 50, but nonetheless, this text is italic, how come? And it's because browsers have a built-in, and we call this a default style sheet. It's a page. If you've ever heard the term CSS, this is what we're referring to, style sheets. They describe how the content should be displayed on the page. Now, most browsers agree on a few default items, and some of those are that strong elements should be bold, emphasized, or M elements should be italic. That said, you have 100% control to override those default stylings, and we call this a reset. It says to each browser, we want you to reset all your default styling because we want to specify our own. Don't worry about that just yet. We're still learning markup, but keep all of this in the back of your mind. So now you would think we can just add as much as we want here, but we need to structure our document, and we'll do that in the next lesson.